Are you Bella? Are you Bella? Season two, episode 14 of Catfish is an absolute trip and not the good kind. It aired on October 8th of 2013. I feel like it's important to include the air dates because it gives some contextual clues about how someone could possibly be down this bad and fooled this hard, but I'm not sure that Kiana gets a pass for any reason whatsoever. So Kiana reached out to the show on behalf of herself. She's 19 and lives in Cameron, North Carolina. She is in an online and very passionate relationship with the famous rapper Bow Wow. Girl, girl, girl. Oh, girl. And even Max's reaction is all of us right now. Come on. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. According to Kiana, Bow Wow is 26, he lives in New York City, and he works as a host on 106 in Park in addition to his music. Sidebar, 106 in Park was my shit. I remember rushing home after school to watch 106 in Park and also watch Law & Order SVU. But I grew up to love music and hate cops, so it's funny how that works out. She says that her and Bow Wow met on Facebook about four months ago. She has always been such a huge fan of his. I have loved him since I was a kid and even hung up posters of him in my room. And one day she messaged his fan page. To her surprise, he responded. She says that they began texting that very same day and things quickly became super serious. Every time I say super, I just sound so Canadian. She says that they bond a lot over their daughters and they talk about how they cannot wait to be one big happy family and they are deeply in love. This girl is delusional. She says that they have not been able to meet due to his busy schedule and they can't video chat due to a bad connection on his end. And I just want her to be so for real. If you are a famous celebrity, I'm supposed to believe that you don't have good high speed quality internet. I'm supposed to believe that. Meanwhile, I have good, high quality, high speed internet and I'm not a celebrity. I just wish I could shake her, right? Like just wake up, girl. She says that she is convinced that he is real because he sent her over $10,000 and shit. For $10,000, I'd stick around and be delusional too. So Kiana girl, I am i can't even be mad at you about this. They then call her on something called Uvu. And I feel like this is an ad because what the hell is an Uvu? While she recounts the story, Max is just looking at her like, please be so fucking for real. Neve says that usually if someone says they're talking to a celebrity, he knows that they're fake, but this is different because he's been sending her money. Who else would have a spare $10,000 that they're willing to send a random online girlfriend? Kiana says that she 60% believes it's Bow Wow. It could be a dream come true if it's really him and I just need her to stop dreaming, besties. I need her to come back to the earth, come back to the ground like the rest of us, touch some grass. They hop off the call and Max makes a very valid point. He says that just because a quote unquote celebrity sends you $10,000 doesn't make him real. And Neve says that on one hand, it is the most ridiculous thing he has ever heard. But on the other hand, it could be 100% true. It really could be him. They say that the money is a big twist. Usually the money coming from the catfish doesn't happen. It's something they haven't seen before. Neve and Max then head to North Carolina and they head right to Kiana's house. She says that she told her family and they all look at her like she's crazy, which yeah, absolutely, because you are. They then ask her how exactly he decided to send her this amount of money. And she says that Bao asked her what she does. She told him the truth that she works at McDonald's and she models on the side, which I feel like in the early 2010s, everyone was a model. Everyone modeled on the side. Bow Wow told her that he wanted to help her out. He wanted to take care of her. So he said, I sent you some money, go pick it up. His assistant did it. He then got his assistant, Larry Brown, to send her the money since he didn't have time to do it himself. She says that she saved most of the money, but she used a lot of it to help her family just make regular payments on bills and things like that. Neve says that he knows very few people who can afford to send $10,000. And she says that Bow Wow told her the same thing. So he sent the $10,000 as a way to validate that he is really who he says he is, which is kind of crazy. They all agree that if not for the money, they would not believe this story at all. They hop online to check out the Facebook page that she has of him and, you know, the page that she originally messaged him on. And- Is this the page you found though? No. The one that I was writing, he deleted, he said. So they aren't connected on Facebook anymore, which you don't find that suspicious at all? Okay. She then goes to show them the text messages that she has with him and it's on a flip phone. And I just feel like the flip phone era was really, it was the day for me. It was it for me. It was the time for me. I just felt like a little baddie walking out with my flip phone. 
slamming it down after having a text argument or a phone call argument with one of your friends or the guy you were talking to at the time, it just hit different. It just hit different. It was so satisfying. But because the Facebook page is deleted, they have literally nothing to go off of except for that phone number. And I feel like the old episodes moved so quickly in comparison to the new ones because we're already onto the investigation. So before the investigation begins, we randomly find out that Max can speak Portuguese. Fala em português. Fala em português. Fala em português. Eu falo. We love a bilingual king, okay? Don't know, don't know why he decided to just randomly pull that skill out and just flex on us, but he did, and thank God he did. Neve says that Kiana is just the right amount of skeptical that it isn't Bow Wow, and like, is she though? I feel like she's the wrong amount of skeptical. It should be like 90% skeptical, not 60% skeptical like she said. Our duo of daddies then get to googling Shad Moss aka Bow Wow. We quickly find out that he lives in Atlanta, Georgia, and they read an interview he recently did in which he said that his daughter lives in LA. I Skype with her and I just wish that I could reach in there and grab her little self. This makes it extremely clear that if he wanted to Skype with Kiana, he could. They then decide to search the phone number and it's linked to a random woman named Renee who also lives in North Carolina. They go to Renee's Facebook page and they find out it's an old white grandma who lives in a little town named Louisburg. Immediately Max is like, thinking what we're all thinking. Nah, this is not the catfish. This is not the catfish. I don't know. This doesn't look like anyone that would be pretending to be Bow Wow. But then they get to thinking and they're like, okay, well maybe it could be her son. But to me, that theory doesn't really make sense because these people don't even look like they would know who Bow Wow is, let alone have a spare $10,000 to send pretending to be him. Like, that theory makes no sense to me, but I guess it's all they're working with. So they keep it in their back pocket and move on to the next thing. They then decide to reach out to their connections at MTV, which I would have thought would have been the first thing you did. But they then decide to call Sandra, who is the head of media relations. Neve quickly fills her in and on everything that's going on. And they ask her if she has dealt with Bow Wow or knows anything about him. I've worked with him, but I, I don't know him personally, so I wouldn't know who he's dating. They then ask about his assistant. She says that the assistant's name is Ant, not Larry. Larry always makes me think of Larry the Lobster from Spongebob. <laughs> I don't know why. At this point, the only lead they have is white grandma and her son. Neve says that it's unbelievable that they still cannot prove that this is not Bow Wow. They then head back to Kiana's. They tell Kiana what they found, or rather what they haven't been able to find. They tell her about the conversation they had with Sandra, particularly the part about the assistant. And at this point, she's just looking at them. Like, I don't know, I still think she had a lot of hope that it was Bow Wow that she was talking to. They then show her Renee, the old grandma, and she goes, Ooh, what? It been, what? <laughs> <laughs> she has no idea who that is. Neve says at this point, he is 99% sure that it is not Bow Wow, but they still have no idea who just has that kind of money. Kiana then admits that it's not even about the money. She says it's about the fact that he was her childhood crush. Whoever this is kind of preyed on that fact that she was very open and transparent about to trick her into being in a relationship with them. She said she wants to cry. And so she does eventually start crying. And while Neve attempts to comfort her, he doesn't necessarily do a great job, but then he turns it around, you know, he's getting close to her, hugging her, all that type of stuff. But then she says that she feels stupid. And Neve says, Don't forget this happened to me also. Lord have mercy. Mm -mm -mm. I just feel like I know he was trying to say this as a way to be comforting to her. Like, it happened to you, it also happened to me. It's common, you're not stupid. But I would have taken it like, oh, Okay, so we're both just two big dummies? Like, <laughs> I would have cried harder. Like, why would you say that? <laughs> Neve says that the only thing left for them to do is to call him and see if he'll agree to meet up with them. Neve gives him a call. He doesn't pick up and actually sends the call to voicemail. Doesn't even let it ring out. That would have pissed me off. I'm so freaking pissed. Neve then sends a message over saying, hey, it's me from Catfish, but it would be best to discuss everything else over the phone. Bow Wow then texts back and says, I'm very busy right now filming the show. Sorry, if you're very busy filming, you don't even have time to text me back, right? But this man is ridiculous. Max then gets mad. Max was such a hothead this episode. He's over this whole situation. He tells Neve to be more direct. Why don't you just text him back? Like, cut the <laughs> We know you're not Bow Wow. Get to the fucking point, bitch. <laughs> Neve then texts again and says, Kiana is pretty sure that you are not Bow Wow, but she still wants to meet you. Then they get a text back that says, you're right, I'm not Bow Wow. 
I'm Shad Moss. And I'm very busy filming for 106 and Park. Unfortunately, now is definitely not a good time. I gotta go. Everybody's so creative. Whoever this heifer is, they are fully committed to the plot. Because how are you going to say you're right? I'm not Bow Wow. I'm Shad Moss. <laughs> Neve tells him to take some time to think all of this over and then get back to them the next morning with their final decision. So the next day, Neve lets us know that he got a text from Bow Wow that says, Hey, it's Shad. Still committed to the bit. I've been thinking about everything. Words cannot explain how I feel about Kiana. I'm going to be in Atlanta tonight and I'm hoping I can meet her. Neve says that it pains him that this could in fact be Bow Wow because they need to meet him in Atlanta, which is where Bow Wow currently does reside, according to Google. Max is in absolute disbelief that he is still sticking with the Bow Wow story and same boo same, because at this point, you think you'd give it up. Like we know it's not you, or we're pretty sure it's not you, right? So they head to Atlanta. The next morning, Bow Wow sent Keon, I feel so stupid saying Bow Wow, but we don't know who it is yet, so it's Bow Wow. Bow Wow sent Kiana a message. Morning, babe. Can't wait to see you. I would love to meet you at my cousin house. They pull up to the address, and as per usual, Neve walks up to the door alone, but this time his knocking was pretty tame, and he didn't even peek in any windows. That's weird. Now, I don't know if this is because he was nervous, or if it's because he thought, like, oh my god, this could really be Bow Wow. I don't want to violate his privacy like that. Or if he just wasn't really doing that in these seasons. I don't know. I don't know. But someone does come out. And uh, Neve is speechless, which he often is not. Neve always has something smart asked to say. So I would have been scared. Kiana sees who it is and she's pissed. She immediately starts crying. The catfish is way too casual for my liking. Well, how you doing, Kiana? Comes out like it's no big deal. Tells him that their name is D Pimpin and they're 23 years old. Pause. I just want to say this. The age gap is a bit of a problem to me in conjunction with all of the other things that Dee had done. It just makes her look like a creep, especially because Kiana is straight and she's like 18 or 19. Dee claims that they are a full-time musician and that's how she got so much money to be able to send to Kiana. Dee says that she never lied about her true feelings and that she just wants them to move forward from this. Keep their relationship the same though. And she wants to keep financially supporting Kiana and her daughter. No, 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 no. Kiana says, I'm not gay, so this can't move forward in any way. Dee says that she's embarrassed, and Kiana says, you're embarrassed. You're embarrassed, I'm embarrassed, you're <laughs> And she whispers the, you are a girl part, as if she's trying to keep it a secret, but it's like, we can see. We all know that that's a girl. We know she's a little stud. We, we see it. Max then asks Dee if she was expecting this to go any better, and she says, yeah. She thought they would just move on from everything. Be fucking for real. Be fucking for real. That's crazy. You have to be a different level of delusional to just think that you could catfish somebody as a celebrity, and then you're not even the same gender of the celebrity that you're catfishing as? And I'm supposed to be cool with it? No. No. Absolutely not. Dee then admits that she created the fan page as a trap to meet a lot of girls and she deleted it though as soon as she got close to Kiana because she didn't want to meet any more girls. Apparently, allegedly, that's what she says. I don't believe her though. Max is like, but friend, those are straight girls that like bow wow. Yeah, I mean, for me, I like a challenge. I'm the type, I like a challenge. She likes straight girls to see what she can do. And boo, tomato, 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 I'm throwing tomatoes. Nia seems stressed and speech is like, what the fuck? Did you just say? He has like this stress hand running through the hair, wiping his face moment like, I, I can't believe this is my life. I can't believe this is what I have to deal with today. Max is then like, you didn't think anything was going to go wrong when those girls would see you in person and realize you were a girl? You think that they would just jump into bed with you? Dee says with a smirk on her face. Yeah. Girl, 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 girl. Girl, you need help. You need serious help. And everyone is speechless at this point. They don't even know what to say. Dee says that to most girls, she comes across as a guy, which I I guess I could see, but to me, it would be very clear that this is a woman standing in front of me. It's not a man. We then find out that Dee's cousin was the one who Kiana was speaking to over the phone. Upon finding this out, Kiana says that she just wants to stop talking to Dee. She wants nothing to do with Dee because not only did you lie about basically everything, but I wasn't even talking to you on the phone. 
So who was I sharing these intimate details about myself with? Some random person because you wanted to keep up a lie? No. When Dee hears that Kiana doesn't want to talk to her anymore, she goes quiet. She looks pissed. I mean, I could give you some time. This girl does not understand, no respect boundaries, and it's really irritating the fuck out of me. Kiana and Neve then go to the car while Max and Dee talk outside. Kiana cannot stop crying. She says she kind of knew that it wasn't Bow Wow, but she never ever thought that it would be a girl. She's mad because I'm like she didn't. Just to make herself feel good and herself happy, like. She didn't really care about Kiana ever. Max then asks Dee if she's ever had to get over straight girls that don't want to be with her after finding out that they're a girl, and she says not really. She's always able to convert them. So Max is like, what are you talking about? How do you do that? <laughs> I don't want to tell you on camera, but... <laughs> you don't find that suspicious. Then says that because she dresses mask, girls are always fooled. I just, I don't know what girl would be fooled into thinking that this was a man upon seeing her. Because immediately upon seeing her, everybody could tell that this was a woman, just a gay woman. She says that a lot of chicks out there don't know that she's a girl. So they're going to see the show and be shocked. I think I'd, if I was one of those girls, I'd be pissed. I'd be coming to your house and ruining all your shit. I would feel so violated. And I think this is a different situation than someone being trans, but you are literally a woman. You identify as a woman and you lied to me about that. Lord have mercy. So then Max is like, okay, so when you're hooking up, when you're doing the deed, they're feeling you up. What happens when they notice something is missing? D then says that doesn't happen. They don't notice that anything is missing because she puts a lambskin dildo in her pants. It's like a real lambskin dildo. It's like human skin. And uses it to be intimate with them. It feels real, like I fooled a lot of chicks like that. Disgusting. At this point, I was no longer laughing at This is a funny situation straight up. This is sexual assault and sexual coercion. Like no if, ands, or buts about it. These women did not consent to hooking up with a woman using a dildo. They were tricked into thinking they were sleeping with a man. And I don't like how casual and nonchalant D was when admitting this. And I don't know if they cut it out, but maybe Max pushed back on it more. I just feel like it's so insane to proudly boost yourself up on national TV as someone who actively participates in sexual assault and sexual coercion to feed your own sick fantasies about turning straight women. But I also feel like D knows that it's wrong. And she wanted to be able to continue doing it after the show, hence why she didn't want to tell Max how she tricks all the girls. Dee then insists that Kiana will come around. She just needs time to make the right decision. I don't like how she phrased that, the right decision. Her making the right decision is staying the fuck away from you. It's not doing what you want her to do. At this point, Max has had enough and he heads back to the car. Kiana says that she feels like crap and she wants to leave, so they leave. The next day, Max says that he's super curious as to where all of the money was coming from. Dee claims that she's a rapper who makes thousands per week, and that has to be somewhat true because where else would she be getting that amount of money to send to Kiana? Neve and Max then decide to do a little mini investigation into Dee Pimpin, but shockingly, surprisingly, clutches my imaginary pearls because nothing comes up. There's no trace of any artist called Dee Pimpin on Google at all. Kiana says that she just wants to hear what Dee has to say for herself, so they head back over to Dee's house to do just that. Dee and Kiana are actually unintentionally matching, which is kind of hilarious, but also it would have pissed me off if I were Kiana. I would have insisted I need to change. Ain't no way I'm going to be matching with a grade A deceiver, s -A -er. I'm not doing it. So Fred, Dee's cousin, the one who Kiana was speaking to, is also there. And Kiana asks him how he could just go along with all of this. And he says he wanted to look out for his cousin. And he's sorry for being a part of the deception. This excuse doesn't even make sense. How is helping trick girls looking out for your cousin? If you were looking out for your cousin, you wouldn't have helped her do this mess. Fred then says that he did not develop any feelings for Kiana, but he hesitated when he answered that. So I'm not fully sure that I believe him. Kiana says, Oh, she was the bow and you was the wow. And y'all just put it together. And I just feel like, I know this is not supposed to be funny and this is not like a haha -ha kiki situation, but um, she kind of ate with that. She kind of ate, she, she ate that one, that one little thing, she ate that. Dee says that finally, she just wants to be open and honest. She admits that she thought, since she sent a lot of money, which she claims to have earned throughout her music career, Kiana would be okay with everything else. This girl is actually certifiably insane. 
you really thought that you could buy off an 18 year old and be a pseudo sugar mama after pretending to be her celebrity crush since she was a kid? Are you okay? Trash. Neve then tells her, like doesn't even give her a chance to say anything else about that. He tells her like, we looked you up and we didn't find anything. Dee then says that she does not put her music out on the internet because she doesn't want anyone else to steal it. The irony is crazy. Neve then keeps pushing her and says that, I don't think you make money performing. So Dee then admits, which is so funny because remember she wanted to be, she said, I'm going to be open and honest, but Neve caught her in a lie. So that's the only reason she came clean. She admits that she borrowed money from friends, from family, and from her various girlfriends. In my opinion, ew. She asked them for money and they always give it to her. Basically anything she asks for, they'll give it to her. And they don't ever tell her no. And I just feel like maybe this is not good, but I just love when people don't tell me no. But the people in Dee's life, they need to be telling her no. I also don't be asking people for money like this. So she also says that she never pays them back because they just support her career. Huh? If you borrow thousands of dollars from me, I'm going to be on your ass. On your ass like white on rice what do you mean you're not going to pay me back because i support your career your career with no music online you think i, I just support that i give you ten thousand dollars to do that no give me my money kiana then says you should have just been honest with me you're a pretender like that's what you are d says that she's not that person she's just a regular normal person trying to do whatever to survive which is another manipulative lie because borrowing ten thousand dollars from your loved ones and your girlfriends to send to your online girlfriend who thinks that you're bow wow that's not you trying to do what you need to do to survive but d flies right past all of that to say that since she's done with all of the fake profiles she hopes that they can develop a real friendship and move on kiana says that she's in absolutely no rush to do so and d says that she can take as much time as she needs which also just reminds me that d doesn't really think that they're not going to talk after this. She's like, yeah, take as much time as you need because I know you're going to come back to me. It's giving very, I don't know, dominating daddy in the worst, worst way. Like not in a way that you consent to that's like fun and sexy in a way that fucks with you mentally for years to come. So in our one month follow up, we find out that Kiana says she's doing real well, which I'm actually really happy for her to hear that. She says she is not currently talking to anyone as she needs to take a serious break to recover from dating D. And I understand that on a spiritual level. You ever just been with somebody who messed you up so bad you just need years off? Girl. <laughs> she also lets us know that Dee did reach out to her, but she didn't respond, which good for her. Even though she could have just asked her for some more money. The girls that get it, get it. And the girls that don't, don't. But I also feel like now that she knows where the money's really coming from, it probably wouldn't have hit the same. You know, like she walked with $10,000 and that's all that matters. And Dee's the one that has to pay it back because it was a gift. So Kiana don't got to give it back. So Dee says that she's also doing a lot better now. She says that she has a job and she's using that money to pay people back, which I don't believe her. I don't believe her at all. She then lets us know that she misses Kiana a lot and she hopes that she will come back. And I hope Kiana never, ever, ever, ever goes back unless it's to use her for her money because that's all Dee truly deserves. A bunch of you have been requesting that I cover some of the Cavish episodes in which people really believe that they're dating celebrities. So this is just the first episode in that little collection of episodes. I expect a lot more to come out. Let me know whether you want to see the Chris Brown episode, the Katy Perry episode, the Shekinah episode, or the Rich Dallas episode down in the comments below. Thank you so much to everyone who recommended that I cover this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And before you leave, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you are aware of every single time that I upload. And make sure to let me know your messy thoughts about this messy girl in the comments down below because I have lots of thoughts and I need to share them with my besties, of course. As always, thank you so very much for being here. I appreciate you deeply and I will see you in the next video.